I'm Jacqueline Clements. We might have just saved a life. I love this country of Canada. This land has many amazing towns scattered throughout the countryside. I enjoy exploring these small towns and their quaint shops. But it's not just about shops and businesses. It's about the people behind them and their stories. Okotoks, Alberta is one of those towns, nestled in the foothills of the Rockies, just south of Calgary. Welcome to In the Jump Seat with Jacqueline. In this episode, we're here with Mark and Lisa Watts. They're the owners of Hubtown Brewing Company, and I can hardly wait for you to hear their amazing story. So Mark and Lisa, you're this husband and wife dynamic duo. Brewing has not always been in your DNA, but science has been. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mark is a geophysicist by, by, by training. training. Okay. And I am, am a chemical engineer. So between the two of us, we have lots of chemistry and lots of, oh, lots of chemistry. <laughs> oh, right. You guys have lots, really of have lots of chemistry. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, we are science nerds for sure. And so you started this, not because you're science nerds, but that helped. Why don't you take us back to the beginning? So you were both in the oil and gas industry. And when that was kind of tapering off, coming to a close, you were looking for something else to do. And you went on a holiday. Oh, the best holiday. So, I mean, very simple holiday. We went camping. We went out to Whitefish out in, I love in Montana. And we went to a little... Like, it was just the two of us, the kids weren't there. Fantastic, had a great time. But what we didn't know we were gonna run into was, was beer. So, I mean, <laughs> if, if anybody knows our story, I didn't like beer. I, in fact, despised it. Cause I thought <laughs> beer was the macro beers, the single lagers, the American lagers that are out there. I didn't know that there was 80 different styles of beers. Yeah, I find that amazing too. I didn't know that until I started doing just a little background on you guys. So while we were out there on this little vacation, we said, well, what are we going to do together? Like, we don't even know what to do without the kids around. So we looked into this little pamphlet and it said, oh, there's these microbreweries in town. So we said, okay, let's go. I'm going to be this amazing wife and I'm going to take <laughs> my husband to a place that I would never go to on my own. But what happened was they took um, a bunch of little samples of beer of these different styles that I didn't know existed, put them in front of us, and we had like that mind-blowing experience where you went, oh, I had no idea beer could taste like this. Mm -hmm. And for us, that's where the wheels started to turn. It was like this epiphany while you were taking a flight of beers, right? Yep. Well, we had grown up being told that Canadians had the best beer, and that's just the way it was. And I liked beer, was fine, so weren't expecting to go down to the States and find anything amazing. Okay. And then the flights showed up. Okay, so now take us from that moment to where you started here, because you didn't just open up a brewery for the public. You actually started in a smaller, more intimate capacity with the town. Is that correct? Yep. I mean, we were a home-based business right off the hop. Mm -hmm. And the reason we were that is because Mark is a hobby woodworker. And I say hobby, he's taken all the courses at SAFE. He gives me grief when I say it's That's hobby. Right. I'm a certified cabinet maker. <laughs> you are? He I did, didn't know that. But he did that in his spare time. You have no idea the things we do when we have a couple of minutes. Let's go back. So you started with the home business. Well, what we were doing was we were making small batch brewing equipment that okay. people could brew in their house, in their kitchen, tiny little setup, something that didn't take over your whole house, which was kind of a niche thing in the market at the time. So we started going to different um, events and markets and selling this and people wanted them and it was great. They're like, oh, this is great. But they kept telling us, they were saying, well, you know, I, I like this and I'm going to get this for my uncle or for my cousin or whatever, but I have this event coming up. Can you brew us the beer? And we'd say, well, no, you can't do that because, you know, licensing and all of the things that have to happen in order to do that and then equipment, of course. And um, they would say, yeah, but we really want you to brew the beer. So we have this thing and we need the beer. And, and we just kept going, okay, every time we go somewhere, this is the sentiment. And the market was saying, we like this, but can you move in this other direction? Hmm. We didn't think it was going to be 
very difficult at all. So the first contact I had after we decided this is the path we're going to go was, hey, I phoned the town. I said, we're, we're thinking of starting a brewery. So just to let you know, we're going to be finding a site. <laughs> all, we had no experience at all with how uh, development permits worked and, and all that kind of stuff. But seemed like it was going great right right off the bat. It was... No, not really. If you think back to the very first conversation we had, we were actually told by the, by the economic development manager at the time, you know what, it's really hard to open a brewery in Okotoks. You should really try to take it outside of town. Go to the foothills and see if you can put it together out there. Yeah, they have less, less rules, less restrictions. Yeah. So Mark and I were like, uh, not very good at taking no. We said, <laughs> is there anybody else we can talk to? And he said, you know what? Don't get your hopes up. And I know that he was trying to prepare us for disappointment, right? He, he's seen it before. There were breweries before us that, that tried to open up okay. in Okotoks. And it was a huge challenge for everybody, which is why there wasn't one. Oh. So he was basically warning us, this is going to be a path. And if you, you really want to do this, I'll give you the guy's name. But be prepared that it's probably not going to work out. Hmm. But he gave us the name and we got a meeting. And then we, met, we started moving forward. So how did you strategize finding the right beer to start serving here? Because there's got to be some technique to how you started. When you look at the beers that we brew, I mean, it really goes back to our original strategy with the, with the home brewing equipment. We used to custom build logos. We created logos for people and we custom engraved everything so that it was very personal. Some people would give us their family crests. They would give us things that were very personal that they could manage in their in their uh, their brewing process so when it came time for us to start strategizing how to do things here in particular the beer we looked at our demographic and we said what would they want and we and we thought okay so we have a heck of a lot of expats in this town so it's true and expats and and they love to come out for a beer yeah. so we're gonna brew beers that we know that they're going to enjoy we're not going to just brew the beer that we love we're going to brew what they love and we are wildly good listeners. Hmm. We listen to what they want, we listen to the market, and we go, that's the direction we'll go because we know that's what you guys want. We're gonna jump forward a little bit because I wanna know how you thrived through the pandemic. Now, I know not every day was easy because it wasn't for any business, but somehow you guys just worked together and had this amazing, effect and influence on our little town of Okotoks. Now, here are some stats, and correct me if I'm wrong, you opened September 1st, 2019, with a 58-seat tap room and 12-seat patio, correct? Two and a half years into business, you are now at a 140-seat tap room and 160-plus-seat patios. Correct. Then six months after opening, COVID shut you down. And I know, and I, ha I use this word a lot in our show because the resilience of Okotoks businesses consistently amazes me because you two decided I'm not taking no for an answer and we're gonna do something. So tell me a couple of the things that you did Oh my. I know you did. I know it's on my notes. I have a lot of things on here. Uh, like you did a crowdfunder uh, okay. June 2020 to survive the shutdown. And you did something with your upper level to grow your patio. Tell for us sure. about that. For sure. So before the, the pandemic, we were operating normal, but had never been through a summer uh, without COVID. We were only six months in. We were. 99.5 almost 100 percent in-house which means everybody came to us so our entire goal as a business is to pull people together mm -hmm. to get them to gather to get them to have a reason to get out so that they it it just is better for people mm -hmm. so for us we were wanted to be the cheers and then when the government said well there's this covid thing and now we're gonna we're gonna shut down your tap room we just went oh my god so we're gonna go literally a hundred percent the other way we were not set up for that we do we literally can every can of beer we have by hand we label the can we we write on the can to tell you what it is we fill it up we do it all by hand so for us 
switching to that model was a wildly different um, model than we had ever anticipated. But we did it. We, we went for it anyway. Wow. And the reason was because people weren't ready for everything to just drop off. Mm, right. So we said, OK, we're going to we're going to go. We're going to do this. It's we're not going to make any money. We understand that the cost of switching is horrible, horrible. It's not the way it works when you're a little company like us and you're hand canning everything that you have. That's amazing. But the relevance was spectacular Wow. because I mean, this town in particular, and I don't know if it happens elsewhere. I think the magic happens here, but I could mm. be wrong. But this town in particular, people. They, they all surrounded us and it was like a big hug. They were like, we're going to take care of you. People were coming in and buying beer for all of their friends. Like this one amazing couple would come in regularly and buy 20 crowlers of beer. The crowlers of beer are huge. And they would go and deliver them to all their friends. Or you'd have people coming in and saying, you know what? We don't even drink beer, but we're buying it because we want you to survive. Wow. So for us, it was, it was huge. So when you talk about the, um, the engraving of 800 mugs, that's because in return for, for the kindness that they were showing us, we wanted to help people feel like they were still part of their community, but the community had to stay home. Mm -hmm. And so we created the Global Isolation Mug Club, which everybody got their mug <laughs> and they got their beer and they enjoyed it at home, but it was okay because they were still part of their community. Wow. A couple of things that stand out, um, you did this beer for life and branded at the brewery and it raised, I see the number here. This is incredible. How much money did you raise and what was it for? I believe it was about $130,000. So the intent was, we, it was a crowdfunder essentially, because every time we were told to reduce our capacity for COVID or shut down our tap room, we had to find a way to get people in somewhere. So mm. we had to spread out. So we would kind of chase that, that wave. So they'd say, okay, now you have to space your tables six feet. Okay, well now there's not enough tables to survive. We need to, we need to build, we need to keep moving. We built our outside patio, um, which essentially saved our lives. But that Beer for Life and the uh, branded at the brewery, which is logos from local companies on our tables, that raised the money to do all of the construction in our upper level and create our rooftop patio. So it opened up 140 seats that didn't exist prior. Another thing that I think is really cool is you have been awarded two awards here in Alberta that I didn't even know existed. So tell us what they are and what they're for. So those are the Alberta Beer Awards. And last year we earned our first two. One was a silver medal for the Don't Hassle the Half, German Half of Eisen. Okay. <laughs> we call it, you know, the Hoff Half. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the second one was a gold for our Summer Wit, which is a Belgian wit beer. Wow. Okay, so how many beers do you actually have here that you serve? We're serving 11 right now. Okay. But uh, we rotate through them during the year, so... Okay. Different ones will come out in summer and we'll add some, take some away. Yeah, take them off, put them back on. And every time we take one off, we get in big trouble by everyone. a collection of people that that's their favorite beer. So we got to make sure we bring them back every once in a while. Very cool. I could go on and on because there are so many things that are happening with you because you are actually taking this business outside of the Okotoks borders. Finally. Finally. Yeah. And so where are you headed? Give us just a little snippet of that. Well, we finally are going to try and solidify a canning line here. So we're going to go from the hand canning, very laborious for, for everybody here, to a, a commercial canning line where we can finally start putting some of the product out into restaurants and, and stores around Alberta. We've never had a salesperson before because wow. there's nothing scarier than saying, hey, would you like our beer? And them saying yes, and us going, oh my gosh, I don't know if we can get you enough. So we have never actively sought out accounts to this day. So this will be a big expansion for us. Well, I can hardly wait to see what's gonna happen. Did we tell you about the beer cocktails for people like you that don't like beer? No, why don't you tell, <laughs> why don't you tell us about those? I thought I'd better say I something. Even, I didn't even know what that, you can have a beer cocktail? Yeah. Okay, so 
our licensing doesn't let us bring in alcohol from other places. Oh, so literally, legally, we can't bring in vodka or, uh, you know, gin or any of those things and make you those kind of drinks on, on premise because our licensing doesn't allow it. Okay, so we, but legally, we're allowed to make beer cocktails. So we take our beer and we combine it with different spirits and we make, uh, yeah, unique cocktails. You know we made one for you, right? <laughs> so you made a drink for me? Yes, a custom drink all about you. It, what's it called? It's called the Jacqueline. Cool as a Jacqueline cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. I'm really not cool right now. I can hardly wait. What's in it? Okay, uh, beer, gin, cucumbers. It's healthy. Oh, I can hardly wait to try it. <laughs> so let's come back in a little bit and we will taste that drink on camera. Okay, first, before we get started, Lisa's the brewmaster. That's right. Correct? And she creates... So she creates all the recipes that, that we have here at Hubtown. Okay. And then uh, for the first year and a half, I was the, the only brewer. And then since then, we've hired our, our second brewer, Vincent. Okay. Now he's taken over the reins for the, the daily brewing. Okay, so you're the lead... So technically now I'm the head of brewing operations, which really means that I fix whatever breaks 24 <laughs> hours a day. Nice. Yeah. Well. Oh, that's great. Okay. So well, I'm going to give you this right now because you're doing all the work. So here you go. Now what we're going to do is you're actually going to be part of an actual brew here. So what we do every day is we take samples of the beer that's, that's fermenting so we can check the sugar levels and the alcohol levels. So. I'll get you to come over to this side here. This is going to be your, your sample port right here. So you're going to put your flask under the, the little spout there. And then with your other hand, you're going to open that, that valve there. And you just got to fill it up till it's about, I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Yeah. So the kid in me wants to open up all these valves. That would be a horrible, horrible thing. Probably right. Yeah. So how much beer is in here? So on a full batch, we get about 30 kegs of beer, which is equivalent to about 3,000 pints of beer. So that's, that's a amazing. good amount there. So turn Perfect. it off? Yep. <laughs> so now because this has been fermenting, there's going to be some CO2 in solution in that beer, and we need to get those bubbles out. Okay. So I can start, and then you can have a, have a go at it. But basically, we're going we're gonna to degas this sample, so we want to get all all the CO2 out. It's kind of just like when you shake a pop bottle. So we're covering the top with our hand, and then you let your hand go, you'll hear a little bit of yeah. CO2 escape. So you're gonna to wanna to do that until you don't really hear anything escaping anymore. It'd be terrible if I dropped this, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be the greatest thing, but. Okay, so let's not do that. Okay, so now we've got this the stuff out of here. Where are we going? What do, what do I have to do with it? I'm not drinking this. So we're gonna, you're not gonna drink that one, although you could. We do do a little taste test every day to make sure nothing's gone wrong in the process. Okay. But we're gonna take that up to the platform and we're gonna test the sugar levels of the, of the wort and we'll see where we're at for fermentation. So with okay. that, we can tell how much is turned into alcohol and if the beer is ready or not. Okay, that sounds great. So we've moved from the vat down there, taking almost our beer, and we're going to pour it in here. That's right. And then we're going to check the level of the sugar that's left in that in Okay. That wort. So this is almost beer. It is so close to beer, it's, it's amazing. So we could drink it, and it would taste fine. You could drink it, and it'll taste basically like what it'll taste like, but right now it's not carbonated. That's really the only difference. Okay. And at some point you'll get rid of all the foam that's in here. Well, we're done with that sample now, okay. so I can take that. <laughs> you can drink it if you want to. Um, I don't think he trusts me. <laughs> so this is the okay. hydrometer. Okay, the so we're hydrometer. gonna lower that slowly into <gasps> your test file there. Okay, so, and then this, this is what measures how much sugar. How much sugar is left in the, in the liquid. And at what point can I let yeah, it go? You can let it go. And it'll, and it just swirls. it'll come to rest there, and then you just check the number where the liquid hits the scale. Um, 
so it looks like it's about 2.2 maybe yeah it looks like it's about 2.2 that's perfect and what does like it need to be at about 2.1 or 2.0 is is where okay. we're at for this recipe so another day you think day to two days yep okay this is your award-winning summer wit that's right that you won a gold medal for last year is that correct that's right and so what makes this special because you have all these vats here so what what makes this the special one well basically uh there's so many styles of beer in the world people were used to thinking that there was american lagers that's kind of what everybody grew up on right and, and when in reality there's 80 plus styles of beer in the world so the only things that make beer beer are four things really, water, hops, yeast, and malt. Those things have to be in it to, to be considered beer. Okay. But then how we change those and what we add to those things changes all the recipes. And Lisa's the one who comes up with the recipes, correct? Yeah, she builds all the recipes that we have. Okay, fantastic. Time for some taste testing. Okay, let's do it. Abigail's going to show you how to make a beer cocktail, okay. which we're allowed to make now, but originally we started with only beer. And like I was telling you before, I didn't like beer in the beginning, so right. I didn't know what range people's palates would be for having beer, so we decided to go ahead and create the beer cocktails. But I'll show you where it started. Okay. That mug is pretty special. It says... It's the Global Isolation Club, and it's like zero, zero, and then it says your name on the bottom. So tell me a little bit about the mug. When we first got started, we created a mug club. Okay. And the mug club, and you can see the mugs all around here, we've got 152 members right now. And what that means is people come in, they get their mug, and they're a part of this community club. They drink their beers out of their mugs. They're custom en engraved for each one of them. But when we were shut down for the pandemic, we decided we needed our community to still feel like they were together. So we created the Isolation Mug Club so that they could take their beer home, they could drink it out of their mug and still know that we were all still together. Yeah, hashtag still together. Right? Yeah. What, they didn't, what we didn't anticipate was that we would sell 800 and we were already deciding that we were going to donate half the proceeds to the food bank. Wow. But because of the community, we had a $10,000 donation. That's amazing. So $10,000 donation from mugs that just wanted to bring the community together. And it just, it multiplied that because you were able to give that money to the food bank. It was pretty special. Wow. That's so great. Well, thank you for doing that Yeah, for the food bank. Thank you for sharing that. Those are really cool mugs. I don't have one, but those are really cool mugs. Um, and this is Abigail. She is our head mixologist. So I'm really excited for you to make the Jacqueline Cool Cucumber. <laughs> I'm so excited I have my own drink. So uh, how are we gonna do this? Um, so I was thinking actually, maybe you wanted to make the drink. I could take you through the steps. <laughs> you got okay. this. Okay. You got this. <laughs> yeah, cause this is my wheelhouse. Uh -huh. Okay, so show me what I'm doing. Okay, perfect. We're gonna start with mint. So you can grab those four leaves and put them right into that glass right there. Yep, drop them right in. And then we're gonna take simple syrup and you're gonna put in, eyeball it. That's perfect. I see they do that on TV. <laughs> it was perfect. Okay, you're gonna take the muddler and you can grab the glass with your other hand and you're just gonna muddle those together, get all of those Nice minty aroma. I like, think there. of something really creative, but I got nothing except I'm muddling my way through this. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. Great. All right. So then we're gonna prep our cocktail glass. So okay. we mentioned it's a it's a cucumber cocktail, so it needs cucumber. Okay. Um, so you have your cucumber slices there. Um, you're gonna grab your glass and you're just gonna line the biggest part of the glass with cucumbers. That is so fun. I can't believe I'm making my own namesake drink. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this is like not going to line it, so we'll just not use that one. Um, but how about this one? This one's really thick, so let's one. do this. Just like yep, this? That's perfect, yeah. Okay. And then I would do another one on the other side. Okay. Well, I feel like this one is like missing out, so yep. we'll eat him later. Perfect. Okay. 
Beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. All right, you can place it back here. And then we're going to fill um, both of these glasses about half full with ice. Okay. I feel like I've seen this on TV before. Oh, and they good. they just do like something like that. That's perfect. Okay. Yep. All right. So then we're going to put the rest of our ingredients into this mixing glass so we okay. can shake it all up. <gasps> and then we'll pour it all into there. I've always wanted to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what am so I So we're going to do an ounce of lime juice. So this is your your ounce there. Maybe just okay. under an ounce. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Right to the top. <laughs> just be a little extra limey. And then a full ounce of gin. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, this comes out a lot slower than the lime one. <laughs> right to the top? Yeah. No. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here. Yes. And uh, I'm just going to give it like a gentle just a little turn, tap. Yeah. Like that? No, this isn't on right. Okay. We're close. We're close. So nice. That should be good. Really? Yeah. Okay. So. And then you're going to flip it? Yes. And we flip it for a very good reason, right? Because if this flies off, it's going to fly off into the people. Exactly. <laughs> and we're going to shake it. And we're going to shake it because you have to like do something really fun with exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. So then keep it flipped. We're going to keep it in that metal glass. Can you take that top glass out? Now, we don't want to bang it against here, do we? No. No, that's like that's a really... That's a surefire way to break the glass. <laughs> break the glass and be fired? Yeah. Yeah, no, so I can't get that okay. off. Ah, nice. All right, so now you're going to strain it over this. So without pouring the rest of the ice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perfect. You're a natural. Look <laughs> at that. Here is my side hustle job. You're hired. Very good. Perfect. Okay. Now, do you want to pour the beer? Oh, yeah, because we have to put beer we in there. We have to put beer in it no, now. No, you go ahead. Okay. So, in this cocktail, we actually put two, we mix two beers together. Wait a minute. I do want to do this. <laughs> what are we doing? So, we're going to start with our Berry Manly. Okay. Pull it just from right there. Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Okay. Start. Stop. Perfect. Now, we're going to move to... Our Fort Knox Belgian Strong. We're gonna do Fort this. Knox. We're gonna do the same thing until it's full. Perfect. Stop. Okay, so this is it. This is the Jacqueline Cool as a Cucumber. We have one final touch to add. Oh, okay. We have a little sprig of mint that we're gonna just add as a little extra mint aroma and you know to make on it pretty. Top, to the side. Just kind of on the edge of the glass, floating on top a little bit. Like this. Uh, you can actually stick the stem right into the drink. <laughs> and that's, that's perfect. why this is not like my day job. <laughs> okay, like that? That's perfect. And now what? It's beautiful. And now you drink it. Does it taste like beer? You know what? There's a little hint of beer, but not very much. It's very nice. Way to go, mixologist. Thank you. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us today, for creating this drink. It's called the Jacqueline Cool as a Cucumber, right here at Hubtown Brewing Company in Okotoks, Alberta. Thanks so much for having us. This was a, an awesome experience. Well, that's it for In the Jump Seat with Jacqueline.